TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we probably won't be live. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where the highlights will be. On this channel. I haven't put a highlight on here in a minute. That's because I need somebody to make the shorts, man. Who know how to make shorts? Come holler at me. And we're going to lock in. You can run this page. I'll give you permissions. Anyway, man, don't forget we do got the Patreon as well, man. Everything is on here. We just watched This Is England 90, the, for, for the finale. It was tough, man. It was tough. It was tough. It's a good show. And we also got the Discord as well, man. Discord, man, that's where you can drop all your requests and things of that nature. This is the Taboo Room. This is from a year ago. Spice Attic Dean. I forget. When I post this, I got to switch it to documentary instead of entertainment. Got to switch it. Let's get into this, man. What's Dean? You used to lock me in the flat. No, 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 no. We don't want to hear this is where we want to start. All right. Taboo, homeless spice addict, right. Dean, London, right. United States. I'm fine, thank you. Um, can you start off by telling us where you grew up? A, a, a pit village in South York, so Doncaster. Um, and what was your childhood like? Fair to mid. Uh, 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 from big, standing from big families from the 70s. Uh, I'm a 75 boy. Uh, I'm a twin. Uh, I have five brothers, seven brothers and two sisters, stepsisters and stepbrothers included. He's a twin. I'm curious to see what, what life his twin has left. And yeah, from a mining village in South Yorkshire, what was desecrated by uh, the female prime minister, Margaret Thatcher, who won't say something much as to. Uh, however, that's where I am from. That's the years I am from. Uh, and... Uh, and and uh, struggled in life from there, really, to be honest with you, from living in the small villages, pit villages, what desecrated. What was your education like? Uh, I, my education was quite all right. As a twin, I used to be like close to my twin brother. And they took me, uh, in the second year, they took me out of being with my twin brother and saw there was something in, 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 inside me uh, aspiring for an education because I moved up to the A band and B band and kept, they kept my brother to the C and D band down below. So uh, that's, uh, yes, yeah, so education, yeah, uh, I, did, I, I, I was quite intellectual at the time, regardless whether I, I, I acted on it or, or put into play. Uh, that's surprising. Shouldn't have brought a book by his cover. He was a smart kid. Where did it again, all go wrong? Twin brothers and uh, social issues with a big family. So how would you describe your childhood growing up? Uh, difficult, because I am a middle child and... With ah, I'm a middle child too, Dean. I, I understand. I'm a middle child, my mom's a middle child, so the, the middle child is a tough spot to be in. My twin brother as well, we are middle child. I strongly believe in a thing called middle child syndrome, where uh, 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 in the big families... We could, be, we could be forgot. It's in my family, pit, in, in the pit villages, the eldest would be eldest, and the youngest would still be the babies, and the, the middle the middle children usually get stand to stray away. And I think I'm one of stray away, try to get their own independence, find out what's going on. Because you gotta think about it: the first child of your parents or your first child, they always gonna have a deep relationship. Always, that's your first child. Before your second child was your first child. You took care of that child. You was there 100% by yourself. You was glued in. You was focused. Laser focused. That second child, you was, ah, okay, god damn, again? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you was, again? Okay, and, and after that second child, you probably going to have that third child quick, and that's your baby. That's your baby, because your last child is your last child. I'm just going on the range of three children. Your last child is your last child. Ain't no more after that. You're going you gonna to baby that child till he 49, or she 49. And then children. So uh, have you ended up where you are today? Uh, well, I've, I've been on the streets on and off since I was 19. My father passed away at home. 
uh, 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 while I was working for Warner Brothers on a night shift. Warner Brothers? I got a phone call about 10 o'clock at night saying, your father's died, he needs to be taken away by coroner. And uh, 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 I never got right with my dad, I never got a chance to say goodbye or anything because he, the coroner had taken his body away. So when I did get to my parents' house, they went crazy at me and started throwing his medication and things. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think the, the time had passed, I couldn't get to see, say goodbye, so I, I live on that, live on that burden as it is, uh, uh, and kind of cold shoulder from the family a little, as you would say, because I slipped away. Um, in regards to any prison time along, along the line? Yes, uh, uh, I, I got three years, seven months for my first offence of drugs. Let's try to say I was... Uh, it looked... Okay, now, all things being considered, besides being a middle child and you going to go find your... In all the law, it wasn't that bad, Dean, so far. It wasn't that bad. There had to be something monumental that changed, changed the framework of you. Supplying low level to fund my own habit. They caught me with four ten pound bags in a kinder egg and gave me three years, seven months. My first offence, because I wouldn't grasp my workers up, because they knew who I was working for. They wanted me to just confirm it off a record. I told them no, that's not the way it works. And so, so this was the moment. So they said they'd make an example of me, and they did. They gave me three years, seven months. And what was the life in prison like? Well, well, uh, obviously it was terrible. It changed you for the worse for a little bit. I hope you're on the up and up now, but let me hear. I never wrote asking my family for money. I've never wrote asking my brother for money. I've never had any family help, never. Because if I, when I have sent mails out and not got replies, it's more of a hindrance, it, more, it hurts more. So if I don't do it, then I can't get hurt. And did you pick up any addictions along the way? I did, the spice addiction, yes, yeah. <laughs> So it was jail. Jail was the moment for him. People go into jail like very innocent, like small charges, but like they said, they wanted to make an example out of him. They made that example, gave him almost four years, and he picked up a spice addiction in there. That's, it came out worse, way worse. Well, it was the legal high, it was sold on the shelves, and uh it take me away from reality for the day, for the minutes, for the hours. Wait, as what? As as I, take me away. That. Well, it was the legal high, it was sold on the shelves. And uh, it take me away from reality for the day, for the minutes, for the hours, as long as I can. However, they, they took it off the shelves of being a legal high and left us all hang and dry the, with an addiction to spice. I, well, I say an addiction to spice. It, it's, I still have to give it a bit of credit for getting me off of heroin. And that's, I guess, the long-term use for me to use. Man, from what I've heard, Spice is worse than heroin. Isn't it? I don't let it go. Because it's been so much of a support and got me off of heroin since I was 19. I haven't used heroin for two years. What, what does Spice give you? An escape for a time, a time of being, of escape. And how bad would you say that habit is currently? Uh, it's not at its worst, but it's not at its best. You said Twitch is moving mad? Like, what's wrong with it? It's moving cool on my side. I can see all the, like, all the, like, you know, credentials and how it's moving. If it's moving slow, it's not moving that bad. It's moving actually pretty good. It's moving back. Restart it. Restart your side, bro. Yes. Or re man. I, I had a drag yesterday in this place. Restart. And okay. uh, I was comatose on the floor outside the doctor's for four hours. I could have been raped and robbed there. All right, look, so. You, he was saying he was comatose outside of the doctor. He could have been R word and robbed. R word is a stretch, Dean. Oh, God bless. So whenever you tell me about your condition, that way you can just fall asleep anywhere? I suffer from narcolepsy uh, and, and cataplexy, uh, which is a sleep disorder. I will call the lazy bastard at home now. Nah, the stream is good. It's just that I was saying 
offline and not letting me know. Why would I do that? And I used to be dragged out of bed with my hair and two big chunks would be pulled out. I'd have ice cream. He's a sleep disorder. I was called the lazy bastard at home now. And I used to be dragged out of bed with my hair and two big chunks would be pulled out. I'd have ice cold water thrown over me to wake me up in shock. I was called a lazy bastard. But when uh, my girlfriend's family took me to see a private doctor, they said I suffer from a rare disease called narcolepsy. It's a sleep disorder. Uh, and then uh, I got a comment off my mum, which said, I always knew there was something wrong with you, but they never took me to the doctors. They never took me to an hospital. That's why I, I cannot be like that with my kids. Like, if I feel like there's something wrong, like, seriously something wrong, like, where I can feel it, I don't even care if it's, like, a little inkling. You know what I'm saying? I don't even care if it's this small of a feeling. We gone. We gonna go see the doctor. I don't gotta schedule nothing. I'm going to the ER. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Period. Day -day well, I'm being robbed twice, three times a day sometimes. And people just... People stalk me to see where I'm tapping up. They stalk me to see where I'm tapping up. Wait for me to fall asleep. I woke up with my pot tipped upside down as though they blatantly I've done it while you're asleep. I went to the toilet at McDonald's one day. They robbed me pot then. They took my trainers off my feet in Charing's Cross Station. They went down my pants and took my wallet with 25 pound and four wraps of spice in. And we had a pair of shorts on, so I put it down my pants. They took my trainers out. Hold on, wait a minute now, Dean. You saying you put your wallet down your pants because you had shorts on with no, with no pocket. So you put it down your, you know, near your meat. You telling me somebody reached down there? At night, and they wallet from down my pants. And that was Challenge Cross Underground Station. I did an appointment for World Homeless Sleep Out a couple of years ago, uh, where uh, they inter come and interview me and ask me about my street life. And they said, oh, we can't pay you cash. However, we can get you some uh, camping materials and things to keep you warm. We'll be here tomorrow at our passport. They never even turned up. Oh yeah, I'd be blue. If they would've used my material, I would've sued. Did they just take a video from yourself about it? They took a video like I'm doing to you now, just get, uh, get uh, 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 and then they told me they'd be back tomorrow with some st some goodies for me. I never saw them again, but I know how much they earned in a week because they were boasting about it, 232 million pounds. I never even said thank you. Are you happy you're doing this interview? I'll Straight used them. I was a bit nervous at first because I've been locked and trapped in rooms, like, I've lost my eyesight now. Uh, uh, they came to full time my DLA, my, my disability living allowance uh, that night, and I, uh, and somebody got got a key to come into the room and rob me. Well, I didn't get my DLA that night, and I was awake when they tried coming into the room. But I was stuck in a sleeping bag, and they forced a way through the door while I was putting the, lifting up to put the Yale lock up. They forced the door open and rolled me over in the sleeping bag. I tried to get out that quick. I pulled the cord tight instead of undoing it. And I was stuck in the sleeping bag with a hood on, with only one arm out and, uh, and my face showing. I was looking up to an IP pay sentence fruitcake with half a pork pie tattooed of a clown's face and a pork pie hat on, sorry. A, a pork pie hat and half a clown tattooed on his face. You sure? You sure about that, Dean? That don't even sound real. Listen, I'm not questioning your, your reality. I understand that them type of things happen, but you, are you sure about that? Like, on the real. You might have been off it. Because that, like, if you tell the police that he had a half a clown thing tattooed on his face, they're going to be like, oh, okay. That's easy to find. Chase, we've turned there. Uh... And it wasn't a very nice sight to look at when he was bouncing off the head. And I went, f I, I went blind four, hour, four days later in the shop doorway, in, in, in the charity shop doorway, about half seven in the morning. This is about four or five days later. The security wait have woke me up, but I couldn't see anything. All I could see was black and the floor pavement. 
across from the uh, charity shop working out foundation was a, an operate uh, 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 an op opticians and I know that they can check your eyes they check your eyes for tum brain tumors and things I thought it was a brain tumor I didn't realize it was from the kicking that night they told me to go to the hospital so I went to the hospital they said the good news is you haven't got a brain tumor the bad news is you've got two detached retinas and you've got Dang. less than a fortnight to save your eyesight however our ophthalmologist, the best in England, is off for two or three weeks. You'll be lucky if you get an operation. Well, they did, they managed to operate me three weeks later and they put buckles around my retinas to reattach them to my eyes. And unfortunately, because this eye was so damaged and pushed to the floor, it can never be repaired and it's dying and shrinking. I don't know if you can tell or whatever. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't. And what would you say is the worst memory of your life? That's a crazy story. So that was real. He was sure about that. That's crazy. Yeah. When my son robbed me, cut my pockets off, pulled the hoodie over my head with his stepdad. His stepdad would beat me while he pulled the hoodie over my head. And then he cut his pocket, my pockets off to get me this job. I'd just come out of jail. We said, oh, you can stay at mine for the night. My son and his, who he calls daddy, says, you can stay in my tent. You can stay in our tent in the garden, but don't be in any trouble. So Listen, man, I don't care what my dad do to me, my biological father. I don't care what that meant. That's still my blood. At the end of the day, I would never do him like that. And I would never let nobody do him like that. No matter what, how fractured our relationship is, it will never be that fractured. That's, that's beyond messed up. Down this alleyway, got me from behind, pulled my hoodie over my head so I couldn't see. He had a big padlock and chain on the bike. Started beating with the padlock and chain with a hoodie pulled over me while he was cutting my pockets off. And took the discharge, ran up 47 quid. That was probably all my worst night. And think about how many bad nights he's had. The one involving his son is clearly the worst. You can see the pain in that man's face. That's terrible. And being it's an L son. Locked in a flat. What happened? He used to lock me in a flat. Your son? Yeah, with all his all, all the windows were locked. He'd lock me in, no electric, nothing. He'd give me a ten pound heroin and some spice. And he'd be like, I'll pick you up in the morning. And then he'd pick me up about nine, ten o'clock in the morning, give me another bag of spice and a bag of heroin to get me out of my rattle, and let me go shoplifting for him all day to pay my debt off. <clears throat> what debt did you accumulate? This son was a savage. This was messed up. This was messed up. He, his son groomed his father. 20 years of debt. Oh, wow. When you said 20 years? Oh, that's my, that, that, that's what he used to say as, where's my Christmas presents for 20 odd years? I got in the, I got, I was in jail with him in the same wing as my son. I sent him a Christmas card saying, God bless, better late than never, but I'm here for you now. When I got back to the wing that day, he snapped a pool cue around my neck. and said, don't ever send me a Christmas card again, saying never, better late than never. That's and then he snapped the pool, right? A few round around my neck while all his boys were laughing at me. Mm. That's another day. What's your relationship like with him today? I left Doncaster and never looked back when I found out she was pregnant. Because I don't want to be the dosser in my grandchild's life. I come here to aspire and better myself. Do you see a way out of your situation? I don't think he cares. That's a bad, that's a, like, I mean, that's a tough situation. You weren't there for your son because he was addicted, and that's how he's decided to take his anger out. But that, that's messed up, man. T.L. Lily would like comment. I'm gone.